about batteries and how the human race has been restricted information and technology. Now, these are coins. They're both the same type of coin. Came off the same machine. As you can see, the different colours. Okay. Now we use nickel in our goldy coloured coins, and I always wondered why. And you have to ex you have to imagine that there's secret technology on the planet. <laughs> okay. And there's coins of the same year which are different colours. I assume one was used and one wasn't used. Anyway, this is a nickel metal hydride battery. It's uh, 1000 milliamp hour or 1 amp hour, which is a reasonable amount for a AAA battery. Now, in 1899, a bloke called Waldemann Jungner, <laughs> Jungner invented the nickel iron battery. So you have to imagine in, in 1899 there were scientists messing around with metals to try and make batteries. Now this is a lithium ion battery. That's one milliamp hour as well. So as you can see this takes about an hour to charge. This takes about an hour to charge. Okay, They both have dissipation rates. In other words, when they're fully charged, they gradually lose their power. Okay, they're quite quick. These two are, but they're very quick to charge, and they deliver a lot of energy for a long period of time. It's one milliamp hour. Whereas, let's face it, a Duracell isn't one milliamp hour. You know what I mean? And you have to chuck it away after you've used it. After it's run out, you have to chuck it away. Now, why have we had batteries that you need to chuck away? Well, it's quite clearly possible to have lithium ion. Now, lithium, the metal lithium, was discovered in the year 1817. Now, this bloke, Walder Mar Jungner, he was messing around with metals and making batteries in 1899, so you have to assume that he would have considered lithium for a battery. So why didn't we have lithium rechargeable batteries in 1899? Because if we'd have had lithium batteries in 1899, the electric car would have been here right now. If you get about a thousand of these batteries, and this will produce, this will deliver one amp hour for a long time. Not sure how long. Uh, it powers my PDA device for 10, 12 hours. So it powers that for 10, 12 hours. So. I should imagine you'd be able to do a good 100, 150 miles in a car doing 60 miles an hour with a thousand of those in it. And when you got to wherever you're going, it would only take an hour to charge them back to fully charged. In fact, if I charge this for 10 minutes, it powers out for about two hours. So, as you can see, the lithium ion battery is a very, very good battery. Now, the nickel metal hydride battery. Is also a good battery, a very good battery. We've had that technology for years and years and years. We discovered lithium, like I say, in 1817. Well, that was a scientific discovery. I'm pretty positive lithium was known before that, and lithium was used before that. So, has there been a cover up? Has the technology been withheld? to gain taxes because let's face it if you get an ever ready battery or a Duracell battery whereas this one is just a rechargeable battery yeah? if you get an ever ready battery or a Duracell battery when I fully charged this rechargeable battery this lasts longer than a Duracell or an ever ready the top of the range ones even the new lithium ones that have come out the, the ones that aren't rechargeable the Duracell's lithium batteries that aren't rechargeable this nickel metal hydride battery lasts longer when it's fully charged So why would I want to go and why would I want to go and spend five pounds or seven pounds on four AAA batteries, which is what you have to pay for the lithium lithium Duracell batteries in this country, when I can buy these one thousand milliamp hour batteries for seven quid and use them a thousand, two thousand, three thousand times? 
who in their right mind would want to go and buy a Duracell when you can have these? Now I'll link these to a solar panel. I'll take a solar panel out with me in the uh, out and abouts. Okay? And a little slave battery, a little less lead acid sealed slave battery, which the solar panel keeps topped up. And then I can plug my um, battery charger into that 12 volt slave battery. And I can recharge, constantly recharge batteries all day. Why aren't we spreading this kind of technology about? What is the problem with that kind of technology? You could have the solar panel integrated into your clothing. Everywhere you went, the solar panel could be integrated into your, into your clothing. You could have you know, shoulder pads, the back of your coat, the back of your jumper could be solar powered. And then you could carry batteries around with you constantly all the time and you could always have a constant supply of batteries with you. If you wanted your clothes to do that. And why haven't we got clothes that do that? Why is it that you have to mess around and get flexible solar panels and then affix them to your rucksacks and do it all yourself? Why can't the manufacturers do it? There's a demand for it. Can't they see they'll make money from it? I feel it's that if manufacturers do it, governments are going to put pressure on them to try and bankrupt those companies because they're taking taxes away from the government. Whereas when we're using mercury filled batteries and chucking them in the bin, and then they're going into landfill sites, that's poisoning the, poisoning the groundwater, which is costing thousands and thousands more to purify out. Now I've had this battery now for around about 10 years, and it still works. It still works brilliantly. Around about 10 years, I've recharged it thousands of times, and it still works. I've got eight of them, right? and in that time, three have now broken. Well, you charge them, they only last about two days. But, in that two days, they give a good power still. This one still lasts two or three months when you charge it. Why are the government, governments of the world, restricting this technology? Because it's clearly the government, it's because the technology is there and manufacturers are trying to get it out. Why are they doing it? What is the point of them doing it? It's costing them more money now than the taxes that they're making. They're doing it on purpose, aren't they? Now, I started this video with coins. Okay, and secret technologies I mentioned, like, yeah? Why do they make coins out of certain metals? And how come some coins turn different shades and other ones don't? Now, let's say there was a secret technology. Alright? and you're using nickel, a nickel coin, and you put next to it some other substance, right? which was about the same shape and size, and you put it inside your device and it powered your device. So everywhere you went, so long as you got the shiny coin, that would power your secret device through secret power for a certain amount of time, guaranteed. And just a little lovely note at the end here, I have a feeling that a yttrium strontium battery would be one of the uh, better batteries that we could make. Right, and because strontium-90 and yttrium-90 are classed as pure beta particle emitters, or beta decay, they're pretty harmless. Right? And with a minimal amount of aluminium shielding, they are completely harmless to humans and other living matter around them. So, why don't we simply make aluminium clad batteries with strontium neutrino inside them which will last around about 15 to 20 years without ever needing a charge.